Translation and Foreign Operations. Topic two. Let's take a look at the overview and methods. First off, when translating financial statements, there are two methods that can be applied. The Functional Currency Translation, FCT method, and the Presentation Currency Translation, or PCT method. The use of method is determined by whether or not the functional currency of the foreign operations is the Canadian dollar or not the Canadian dollar. The functional currency is defined by IAS 21 as the currency of the primary economic environment in which the entity operates, with the primary economic environment being the one in which the entity primarily generates and uses cash. Remember, in this chapter, we are now talking about the entire subsidiary, that is, the company whose parent is in Canada, whose presentation, operating, and recording dollar is Canadian dollar, whereas now we're looking at the subsidiary who is somewhere else in the world using a different transaction currency. We need to translate that subsidiary's entire financial statement back to the Canadian dollar prior to consolidating them. There are a number of indicators that are used to determine whether or not the Canadian dollar is the functional currency of the entity. The most important are where the sales and operating costs are generated or incurred and paid, uh, in which we look at the primary indicators, which are sales price. If the sales of the entity occurs in Canada and are denominated in Canadian dollars, it is an indicator that the functional currency is Canadian dollars. Similarly, operating costs. If labor and materials are paid for in CAD and sourced from Canada, this is an indicator the functional currency is CAD. Three, competition and regulation. If competitors are primarily Canadian or the company is listed on the Canadian Stock Exchange, this is an indicator the functional currency is CAD. Financing. If the debt or equity of the company is denominated in CAD, this is an indicator functional currency is CAD. Number five, operating surpluses. If excess cash is held in CAD, denominated accounts, investments, um, anything to that liking, this is also an indicator the functional currency is Canadian dollars or CAD. If the opposite of any of the above are true, that is labor, and materials are mostly foreign, excess cash is held in foreign currencies, etc. That indicators, <clears throat> pardon me, that is an indicator, those are indicators that the functional currency is not the Canadian dollar. So the whole point of this is trying to figure out what is the functional currency of the entity. Further indicators exist beyond the primary five previously listed and assist in determining how integrated the foreign operations are with the parent. We can also look at the extension of the parent. If the entity only imports the parent's goods for sales, it is an indicator the functional currency is CAD. Autonomy. If the parent dictates most procedures and policy, that's another indicator the functional currency is CAD. Intercompany transactions. If most of the transactions are intercompany, another indicator that the functional currency is CAD. Cash flows. If the cash flows of the foreign operation can significantly affect cash flows of the parent, that support that the functional currency is CAD. And lastly, financing cash flows. If the parent is obliged to pay the debt of the foreign operation, it is an indicator the foreign currency is CAD. Similar to the previous slide, if any of these that I just discussed were the opposite, that is support that the functional currency is not CAD. The key difference between the functional currency translation method and the presentation currency translation method is as follows. The FCT method aims to produce financial statements as if the foreign transactions had occurred in the functional currency in the first place. In contrast, the PCT method is simpler, but does not aim to recreate the transactions as if they had occurred in the functional currency in the first place. Here, we are looking at the, quote, net exposure of the investment, which will lead into a future video when we look at the mechanics behind the translation method. 
when you go through the mechanics, you will definitely see that um, this FCT method is in fact the more involved method, which I think intuitively uh, we could gather from this slide, from this discussion, as if um, recreating every single transaction sounds like it would be more work than looking to capture the net exposure of this investment. Time for a question. You are tasked with determining the functional currency of a foreign operation. Which of the following indicators should be given the greatest consideration in this decision? Is it A, whether or not the parent guarantees the debts of the foreign operation? B, where most of the operating costs are incurred? C, the degree of autonomy of the foreign operation? Or D, the percentage of sales of the foreign operation that are entirely imports of the parents' goods. What do you think? Well, if you said B, where operating costs are incurred, it you would be correct, as this is one of the primary indicators of functional currency, whereas the remaining ones, while, uh, while relevant, they are all secondary uh, considerations, so secondary indicators. Okay. Wonderful work. I will see you in the next video where we will be uh, talking about, about the FCT method. Talk to you soon.